This is part four in our series of lectures on section 2.1, and in this lecture we're going to look at two proofs involving sets. So here's the first one. Suppose we have three sets A, B, and C, and I want you to write a formal proof that if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. So formal proof means it's best if you begin by writing it in symbols. So go ahead and write down what that says in symbols. Well, here it is written out in symbols, um, although you see there's a little typo here. I should have put P of U. Okay, for all A, B, and C in P of U. In other words, that's a fancy way of saying for all A, B, and C subsets of U. So sorry about that. That should be P of U. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C, then A is a subset of C. Okay, that's what you want to prove. Now, how should you write a proof of something like that? Well, this is a really standard uh, statement, a conditional statement. So you should begin by saying, let A, B, and C be subsets of U. Suppose A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C. And then you should try to deduce that A is a subset of C. Now, I find that students have problems with this because they've got three things to work with. They've got A as a subset of B, they've got B as a subset of C, and they've got A as a subset of C and they're not sure when to deal with each one of those things. A lot of students will deal with these first, and that's a mistake. They should actually deal with this first. So after writing down the preliminary statement about, you know, let A, B, and C be subsets of U, suppose this happens, the next thing you should try to do is you should try to directly show that A is a subset of C using the working definition. The working definition of this is, for all X in U, if x is in A, then x is in C. So you should try to do that directly. You should say, let x be an element of the universe. Suppose x is in A. And in order to prove that it's in C, you should make use of this. So that's when you should introduce this idea. Just introduce it when you need it. Don't introduce it at the first sentence, because you're really going to confuse the reader. The reader won't know what it is you're trying to prove and what it is you already know. So put your video on pause and see if you can put all those ideas into a perfect formal proof. And when you, can, when you come back, you can look at my solution. Okay, here's my proof. And so follow along here. I begin by saying, let A, B, and C be subsets of U. Suppose A is a subset of B and B is a subset of C. Now in this sentence, I'm going to warn the reader what it is I'm intending to do. I say, we must prove that A is a subset of C, and I describe how I'm going to do that. In order to do this, we must prove that every element of A is an element of C. And so now I go ahead and do that. I say, let X be an element of A. And now you see, in order to deduce that X is an element of C, I'm going to make use of my hypothesis. I say, since A is a subset of B, it follows that x is an element of b. And since b is a subset of c, it follows that x is an element of c. That's because we've just finished deducing that x is an element of b, and so that it follows from here that x must be an element of c. So you see I've succeeded in saying if x is an element of a, then x is an element of c, and so I have just proved that a is a subset of c. Okay, but please note the order in which I did things, and the fact that I, I assumed that this was true, but I didn't make use of it until I needed it later on in the proof. Okay, here's one more for you to try. I give you two sets. A is, and you'll notice that I'm using set builder notation for this one and listing notation for this one. A is the set of all real numbers x, such that x squared equals 1, and B is the set consisting of the two elements minus 1 and 1, I want you to write a formal proof that A is equal to B. I ask you to write it in the usual format for proving equality of two sets. So what I mean by that is um, to show that this is a subset of this and this is a subset of this. Okay, so your proof should really have at least two paragraphs in it, one in which you prove this one of which you prove this, 
and prove each of those by using the formal working definition of subset. Alright, so put your video on pause and write up a formal proof and uh, then compare your answer to mine. Okay, so here's my proof and as I promised I have these two paragraphs. In my first paragraph I prove that A is a subset of B and in the second I prove that B is a subset of A and in the third paragraph I just sort of summarize what I've done. Okay, so I warn the reader, we first prove that A is a subset of B. Now what is the working definition of that? I have to show that every element of A is an element of B. So I say, let X be an element of A. Then I write down the meaning of that, which comes from here. It says, nothing more than X squared is equal to 1. Now I'm not going to take square roots, because that's a risky operation. But rather I'm going to prove something about, I'm going to figure out the solutions of that, by factoring, I bring the 1 across to the left, and I say, well, that, that means that this product is equal to 0. The only way a product can be 0 is if one of the terms, one of the factors is 0, and so either x must be 1 or x must be minus 1. So I've proved that x is 1 or minus 1, and that means it follows in either case that x is an element of b, because there's the working definition. That's the definition of b. So I've shown that any x in A is also in B, and therefore I prove that A is a subset of B. Now we start over, and I say, we next prove B is a subset of A. And so to do that, using your working definition, you, you say, let x be an element of B. What does it mean? It means that x is either minus 1 or plus 1, so I write that here. Now I have to prove that the square of it is 1, in order to show that it's in A, but if x is 1 or minus 1, then a simple calculation shows that x squared will be plus 1. So I say, in either case, x squared is 1, and so x is an element of A, because x squared equals 1 is the defining property of uh, saying that x is an element of A. So I've shown that any x in B is also in A, and therefore I've proven that B is a subset of A. And then to summarize, I say, since A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, it follows that A is equal to B. Okay, so this is really a very typical way of proving the equality of two sets. So please follow this kind of a format when asked to do such a thing.